What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the fifth part of a story where Issei was betrayed and became the Jinchuriki of Kyuubi. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Also, this is a translate version, you may find some mistakes, specifically in the character's gender. Issei of course is a male, but this time we have a female volley, female drag and female great red. Welp, with that out, let's get into part 5. Underworld. Meeting room. You could see the leaders thinking about what happened a few hours ago with Issei and Mio, they knew that Issei had warned them of what he would do in these cases, but they thought it was just a lie told in the heat of the moment. Azazel. Well what happened was to be expected, he warned us about what he would do. Aden. But what she was his mate did before was too much, how could he leave her in that state knowing what she feels for him? Falbium. Aha well if I had been in his place I would have done the same thing, remember that all of us agreed on what we did with him, even his own parents. Michael. But that was not the way to fix things with her, right now the Red Emperor is hospitalized for her injuries, and Tannen is in surgery for trying to stop Issei. Azazel. Well, all this happened because of our decisions. Aden. If only we had not done that with him, but at that moment fear invaded us, and we were afraid that upon finding out what they were doing behind his back, he would seek revenge against everyone. Michael. Yes at that moment we thought more about our safety than about what would happen in the future, but we also fell for not only deceiving the girls, but all of us, he made us believe that he was a better option to lead us in the fight, and like fools we were used by him now we have nothing, people want him to come back, but we know he won't do it, not after what we did to him. Halbium. Well this is getting more and more complicated. At that point everyone sees that someone was entering. Azazel. Tannen what the fuck are you doing here in your current condition? Tannen. Don't worry, I'm fine at the moment, I can't be in a fight, but let's put that aside, there's something very important we have to do. Aden. What are you talking about? Tannen. Remember how Issei left mine, well we must make sure that she doesn't get close to me again. Michael. Because Tannen. Tannen. Remember one of my race's laws about fighting. Azazel. What's the point of that if they're just fights where titles, territories and. Damn it are at stake. Tannen. I see you realized Azazel. Halbium. What happens? Azazel. According to me, if a female loses to a male, she must automatically become his mate. Aden. But that has to do with Mio, I know she is a dragon, but not that she was with Issei before. Tannen. Yes, he was with him, but they never faced each other before, so that didn't have much influence at that time. Michael. So now she will be even more interested in him, we must prevent her from getting close to him or else this time Issei will kill her. In the hospital. Mio's room. We can see her lying on a bed, but if we look a little closer we can see that she was sweating. Inside her mind we can see Mio in front of Elsha and Belzard, while the other bearers were behind them. Mio. You can't do this to me, you are just past hosts. Elsha. You are a fool empress, we may be just memories that were left here, but we are also the source of your powers, every time one of us died your power became ours. Belzard. If we want, we can easily seal your abilities, we just have to not recognize you as such, and that's it, remember that the booster gear is much more than an artifact to seal you, by god of the bible. Mio. But with what right do they do that? I am the one who gave them this power, if it weren't for me they would just be simple humans. Elsha. And without us you wouldn't even be able to get out of here, I can't believe what you did to say, we can't stand the fact that you changed him, but that's what just happened, how can you go and attack his mates after you change him? You will leave and discard. Leo. I didn't know what I was doing at that moment, and I know that he will understand, they only seek him for his power, I won't let them use him as if he were a tool. Belzard. But they don't see him as a tool, instead you are just a tool of suffering, you only use him to feel good, and when you see someone according to your best, you will throw them away again, we all know that, you believe that we are a tool for your tastes, but the truth is that the only tool is you, because you think that none of them freed you before. Mio was shocked by what he said. Exactly, you think that we didn't know we could get you out of here, none of us did. What we did because we knew that was your goal was to use us to get out of here, and let me tell you, you did it, you got out of here, but at the expense of Issei, so now we will prevent you from using your abilities again. Mio was devastated, they always knew how to free her, but they didn't do it because they believed she was just a tool, but Issei didn't believe it, then she realized what she did had deceived the only person in the world who never considered her a simpleton. Power tool. She couldn't take it anymore and cried right there in front of her former carriers who saw her as if she were nothing. Out in the room. Mio. Forgive me. Issei. She said unconsciously while shedding a tear. 
Meanwhile in the city of Lilith in the underworld we see the demonic council in the middle of the square. They were about to give an announcement being seen by everything supernatural. But it was also being transmitted, so it was being seen by each of the former women of Issei. Evil Elder. Thank you people, today we come to give a new announcement and decree. Evil Elder. We announced that due to the latest events that happened, a new pillar for the supernatural will be elected because the previous one did not turn out to be who he was. It will be anyone who occupies this position, but someone who was taking the reins in the war at the time. Many had an idea of who he was and did not believe it. Evil Elder. So by our mandate we cancel the banishment of Issei Haidu and call him back to our ranks, well according to the new decree that we will make he must represent to our service and must agree to be engaged to several women heirs to form a new bloodline so that his descendants may be general futures for our forces. It should be said that this news pleased the underworld, while well, Issei ex Harem were happy that Issei would return, but this only bothered Victor since they wanted the brunette to be back in their hands and he would not allow that since it would be a danger to their plans. Victor. I won't allow it, I can't let them get stronger, Professor X. Professor X. What's happening? Victor. Quickly prepare our forces, we must take the objective right now, we cannot let him join the factions back. Professor X. And what happened to the plan to become friends with him? Victor. There is no time, if he does not join us then we must eliminate him immediately, he is a danger to our objectives. Leaving aside what happens in the supernatural, let's focus on what happened to Issei after the display of anger he had. We can see Issei lying unconscious in the middle of the room while the others looked at him worried. Karama. Apparently what that thing said about her emotions was not nonsense, it almost killed her and that dragon. Viteria. Sorry, we were with him and we couldn't do anything before he got out of control. Aisha. Don't worry, they helped him when he was about to kill the leaders, but they couldn't do anything there, she provoked him and tried to hurt them, so Issei couldn't help but get angry about that. Yang. But why is he like this now? He hasn't moved since he fainted. Karama. Don't worry, that's because that display of power left him very exhausted, and then that dragon made him angry, causing him to release that energy even more. Brunhild. So what do we do now? Karama. Nothing, let's just let him rest, he needs to calm down, or else next time he won't stop at murdering whoever comes for him. Smith. We have to make sure they don't make contact with him then. Sharon. That's easy if it were just the demons, but if it were some goddess like Scarlet or Office we couldn't do anything. Weiss. We must become stronger then. Everyone looked at her. Remember Issei becomes stronger for us so we must do the same for him, we may not be able to face very powerful beings, but at least we will defend him from them with all our might. Our strength. Karama. I see that my partner has good females, well then I will help them train physically. Sikvera. Thank you Karama. Karama. There's no point in that they are my partner's wives so they are like family. Ran. Look. He said, turning on the television, watching how the city was attacked by the beasts that Issei faced. Pateria. They have already started moving, they are surely looking for Issei back. Ruby. But because they attack the city, they shouldn't stay hidden from humans. Alicia. They are a group of criminals who don't care about anything besides themselves and their plans. Jer. How many innocent human lives? Jisato. They are damned, they don't care about anything. Suddenly everyone feels a breeze behind them, so they turn to see what it was, seeing that Issei had disappeared from there. Sekvera. Where is Issei? Everyone was alarmed but. Karama. I think you guys should keep watching. I point to the television. Everyone saw that in the middle of the street in front of the beasts was Issei in a battle suit with a mask on. Minutes before in Issei's consciousness. Issei was there again rubbing and nothingness remembering what happened before, he wasn't bothered by what he did to Mio, but the fact of making his women cry was what bothered him. Issei. I must learn to control myself, I can't let my hatred dominate me again, I don't want to hurt her because of my blind fury. Suddenly a light emerged from the darkness showing a figure of light that looked like a woman. Issei. What? Who are you? The figure was just standing still when it suddenly approached Issei while taking on a more human form. Issei was shocked he was when he was a child. Issei kid. Hey, why are you worried? Issei. I hurt the people I love the most, and all because of the hatred I felt. Issei kid. Then why don't you apologize to them? Issei. I'm scared. Issei kid. What? Issei. That the same thing that happened with the others happens again. Issei kid. Then go and show them that you are the person they fell in love with, show the world your new true power. Issei. But if I hurt them or someone does it because of me. Issei kid. Then protect them with our true strength, which always made us stand up and continue fighting. Issei. But I can't just use that strength, I won't be able to save them all like this. Issei kid. Then let's use hate too, but let's not let it use us. Issei. 
Since I can't control myself in front of them, I feel hatred when I see them, it makes me angry that they come asking to return to them after what they did to me. They say kid. Then let me take care of controlling it. He said, starting to shrink into a yellow sphere going towards Issei. Issei. Wait you are. Issei kid. I am you or rather I am your happiness and the love you feel for Sekvara and the others at the moment. Issei. As at the moment. Issei kid. They are not the only ones who will be in your heart, there are even more missing, some you have already seen, while others have not yet appeared he, well I think it's time for you to come back, they need you outside. Suddenly he entered Issei making him stand up seeing what was happening in the city, so he quickly went to that place. Everyone was surprised, people believed he was just a boy playing at being a hero. Issei without further grabbed the creatures, killing some with his sword under the gaze of the people who were there. But he didn't know that he was also being watched by the underworld. Issei just moved forward while dismembering the creatures, but he couldn't see where they were coming from, they kept coming no matter how many he killed, then he jumped over a ledge, starting to see the panorama of the place a little, he immediately noticed some different creatures that apparently they were the ones that allowed the other creatures to continue appearing. Issei. So they summon the others, I better take care of them first, but there were too many of them, no matter how hard I try, I won't be able to reach them, the same thing happened before in the previous battle, their numbers are too much for one person, and I can't use all my power because of the people who are out there, what can I do? He said while avoiding the attacks that were thrown at him. That's when he sees that in a pile of the creatures he had previously killed, the same purple mist as his own was coming out of the bodies. At that he remembered what Barkers told him earlier about how by fusing he will unlock new abilities. Issei. I must try. He said, walking towards the bodies. When I was close, I felt as if something was telling me what to do. I unconsciously pointed my hand at the pile and said. Arise. Everyone was confused by what he was doing until they saw that a purple whirlwind came out of the pile of bodies. When it vanished in front of Issei, there were living creatures, but they were different. His body seemed to be made of shadows of a purple tone. The people were surprised. While well, Sekvera and the others were impressed by Issei's new ability. The summoned beasts knelt in front of Issei, signaling that they obeyed him, Issei smiled at this. Issei. Well this is interesting, but this is not the time for that, help me get to the middle where the beasts that summon the others are. The beasts nodded and went to the front, freeing the way, everyone was excited to see that the creatures of Issei, no matter how much they were cut, they regenerated again as if nothing had happened. Issei continued ahead with his soldiers, thus managing to reach the group he summoned, although there were many of them, Issei was not complicated by the new ability he discovered, so he easily cleaned the area of those things, the people were cheering for him until he was gone. A child approached. Child. Excuse me, sir, what's your name? Issei was left thinking, or did he have a name, so he decided to give himself one. Issei. Call me, Shadow Monarch. He said as he jumped into the sky, disappearing in the blink of an eye, leaving everyone surprised and grateful for being saved. Meanwhile, Aztec faction. Hudsalkitl. Ready Tsunade, we are ready to talk to him. Tsunade. It seems a little silly to me that we say I win a trip like this here when we don't even know anything about it. Hudsalkitl. Don't worry, there are those who wouldn't accept an all-paid trip to Mexico. Tsunade. I still think this plan is stupid. Hudsalkitl. Well, when you disappeared, I sent you a letter saying that you won a gift of wine, and you appeared two hours later when you were in your hidden village. Hudsalkitl. Once this works, now go and send them this letter quickly. Sunade. Oh my god, I must stop my addiction to alcohol, she said, going to a mailbox to leave the letter. But now let's go with our brunette, who was all battered on the ground by his girlfriends, while Karama, Ren and John were trembling in a corner from seeing such brutality on the part of the girls towards their fallen comrade. Sikvera. There my love, you don't know how scared we were when you disappeared without saying anything. He said smiling while he had a wrench. Aisha. We don't care if you go out to save people, as long as you let us know before you disappear after you almost killed someone, and you fall down in our arms. Smith. What the fuck were you thinking when you left just like that after scare you us by how you behaved he, don't you know how worried we were? They say. Well, if they hit me with everything, I don't think they care much about my health. He said while rubbing his back. Jer. What did you say? She said with a metal roller. I say. Nothing ma'am. Alicia. Well, I heard that you answered us, she said, holding a large wooden cross. Jisato. Well, I think he hasn't learned his lesson yet, girls. He said, swinging the broomstick. I say was scared when he saw the smile that his women were giving, so he tried to get out of there, he looked at the Karama and the others looking for help, but he saw that they shook their heads. I say. Sons of bitches. He couldn't continue because the girls began to harass him again under the terrified gaze of his classmates. Karama. 
Watch and learn guys because when you have a mate you will go through the same thing. Brandon and John shuddered at the thought that they would suffer the same thing as the brunette. Karama. We better retreat before they catch us too. Sikfara. Now tell me where you got that suit. Karama trembled at this. Issei. Karama made it for me for these situations, and Ran and John helped me with the name and the helmet. They both trembled when they didn't hear the blows like that of Issei. They both turned around seeing the girls behind them giving a smile that scared them, so they looked at Nora and Pura looking for help, but they just denied while saying that they deserved it. They both cried when they were beaten by the girls, while Karama laughed at the doorway, thinking that he escaped that fate, but when he was about to leave one of Issei's beasts grabbed him by his shadow preventing him from leaving, Karama looked at him. Issei who was smiling. Karama. Damn bastard. At that moment he felt that someone was behind him and as it never fails, his name was heard while he turned slowly. That afternoon you could only hear girls screams asking for forgiveness throughout the neighborhood, the men knew that some male competitors were paying for something, so they paid their respects. Meanwhile we can see the former girls meeting at Rhea's house, talking about how to get a say back using the decree of the council elders to achieve it, even Athena, Aphrodite, Office, Scarlet and Valerie, had appeared to listen to Rhea's plan. The day began the last week of classes, the students were excited, the winter break was approaching, many were discussing the places where they should go, others were talking about spending it with their families, but let's see what Issei is doing now, we can see it now lying under the tree. Usual tree next to the others while Karama was resting on a well-hidden branch. Issei. This is really relaxing, who would say. Even though it was late fall today was a fairly warm day enough to be able to lie under the sky and watch the clouds go by. Ruby, without him realizing it, approached him and lay on his chest, being followed by the others. Ruby. Yes, it is a very beautiful day today, and even more so for being able to be close to you. Yang. But they know what can improve this environment. Blake. Some music. Weiss. And who else than our dear mate to do it? They all watched while Ren, John, Nora and Pura were smiling to see their friend's interaction. Issei just laughed at what his girls asked and took his guitar out of the case, as he settled in and refined it. Issei. Whatever my beautiful ladies want, I will give it to them. It should be said that when he started, his girls blushed because of his words. We can even see several students who were passing by who stopped to listen to him. Even some teachers were there. Since he started singing, many had admiration for him. Even some girls started to look at him as if he were a prince, but they couldn't do much for the girls who were always with him. When they finished, everyone left, leaving them alone there. The music managed to leave a very peaceful atmosphere, but Karama felt that someone was approaching, and he didn't like seeing who it was, so he warned the boys. Karama. Guys, be careful, someone is coming, it's one of them. When he said that, the peaceful atmosphere disappeared for a serious and cold one. Issei. Because the hell I can't be at peace, maybe they don't understand the easy way. Weiss. Don't worry, we'll see what they do. I don't think they're stupid enough to cause problems here in front of everyone. Suddenly everyone sees a head of yellow hair approaching, it was Kiba who hadn't appeared for a long time. Kiba. Issei, can I talk to you for a moment? Issei. No, I make you go at once pretty boy before I threw you out of here like I did with the bitchy lizard, and you know something I want to keep massacring her so if you don't want me to continue with you instead she better you better leave while I still retain a little self-control. Kiba. I need to talk to you, it's something about the council. Issei. And now what, they forbid me to come to this academy or what? Kiba. No, they order you to return to their ranks again to help them against the new threat that appeared, they will remove your banishment so that you return to their orders. Issei started to lose patience, first his exes start bothering him, and now this, he already warned the leaders of the consequences of bothering him again, but now he must show those geezers what will happen for bothering him. Issei. Who oh and you think I will just go back and join them, well let me tell you something, you better go and tell those mummies not to bother me if they still want to remain in power, or else what I did to them, Tannen will be just a summer breeze, compared to what I'll do to them. Dibba. I'm sorry but I can't leave if you don't agree to go, today they will have a meeting in the underworld, and they want you to go so they can re-enter you. They say. You better get out at once, lapdog or else I'm going to make you leave myself. Yang. Issei, calm down, we're in public, you can't get out of control because of him. Kiba. I better listen to what Issei says, since the only thing you're good at is obeying people like with Rai. Ahhhhh. Kiba couldn't continue because Issei had punched him in the stomach, sending him flying down the hill by force. Issei. I warn you, fuckface, you asked for it so now don't come to me with those assholes about us we were friends before and that. Kiba. Damn. Son of bitch. He said holding his belly while he could barely breathe. Issei. 
What happens, princess, it hurt you, not that you were better than me or that, you always believed that you were much stronger than me and now look at you, one simple blow from me was enough for you. Remember this from now on the essay they knew they no longer exist, and I will not let you come believing that I will return to you after what they did to me so go and tell those old people that I'm going to that meeting to make it clear to them what will happen if they try to fuck me back. He said grabbing from the head to Kiba and closing him to his face. Now go at once before I change my mind and use you to de-stress me. He said letting him out while he left with the others. All this happened under the gaze of someone who was in the shadows, none other than Kuroka, who decided to go see the brunette. Kuroka. Now he's more dominant Naya, I hope it's like that when we make kittens together Naya, I can't wait for you to come back with me my little dragon. She said disappearing into the shadows. The day had ended relatively quickly, now Issei was at home preparing to go to the underworld to make things clear to them, but his mates wanted to go too. Issei. I'm sorry but I'll go alone. Sigvera. Like you're going alone, are you crazy you don't know what they will try to do to make you return to them. Aisha. Do you know that if you go alone they have probably set up a trap or something so that you can't leave. They all said the same thing until Kurama, but Issei said the reason for his decision. Issei. If you go they will surely be used against me, if you stay here they won't be able to do anything to hurt you, so I will be able to defend myself if that is the case. Kurama. But what if you get out of control again we won't be able to intervene. Issei. Don't worry, I'll just go and make it clear to them that I no longer have any ties with them. Kateria. Ah we better let him go alone. Alicia. What the hell are you saying, Kateria, aren't you afraid that they'll do something to her? Kateria. Yes I am afraid, but I also know that he will return to us if he is attacked, remember being his mate meant that this would happen, so we have to be prepared for what happens. Brunhold. You're right, we already knew that it was a possibility that they wanted him to come back with them. Jer. But sister he will go alone, he will be completely surrounded by them without help. Issei. That's what you're wrong. I won't go alone. I always have my soldiers next to me. He said while well, his beasts appeared from the shadows. I'm not stupid to go into the den of the wolf without preparation. In case something happens, I'll call. The Kurama to help me and if necessary I will retreat through my Kamui so don't worry, you know that I have to solve this alone, so that we can be together in peace. Jisato. Just promise that you will return safely to us yes. Issei. Always my beloveds, no matter where I am I will always return to you no matter what. They all went to kiss him goodbye. Issei. Guys, in case someone comes, please protect them for me, yes. Ren. Don't worry friend. John. I swear that I will defend them from anything. Issei. Thank you. He said disappearing. Meanwhile, the underworld was in chaos, the news that the former pillar would appear today became a shock, everyone hoped to see him again after his banishment, many were happy about this, but some thought that something bad would happen because of it. But not only was it there, but this was being transmitted to everything supernatural that was eager to see it back. Many high status families were present, they wanted the brunette to mate with one of his daughters to obtain his strength and the favor of the council. All this happened in the council room which was like a party due to the number of people there. Azazel. This gives me a bad feeling, I don't think he'll come and agree to come back after what he told us. Michael. This will be problematic, he won't let this go unpunished this time there will be a lot of blood. Auden. And more so if any of the girls appear, they are sure that they will not be able to come here. Azazel. If we manage to lock them all up before they could do anything, I don't want this to get out of control for them. Michael. And is there any news from Serzich's or his father? Halbium. No, as Ajuka told me, they are still the same, I don't think they will appear here. Auden. It's the best, as I know, when they found out what their wives did, they looked very bad, and after knowing that they were now interested in Issei, they became angry. Azazel. It's just one problem after another, maybe these are the consequences of our actions. Michael. Well, that's the least important thing, Shiva, upon knowing the identity of the person who left him almost dead, lost control and almost went like that, if it weren't for his wives, he would be dead now. Hanan. Let us pray that this ends peacefully today. Azazel. If this was planned by the council, I tell you that this will not end peacefully. Fallen Angel. Lord Azazel we have a problem. Azazel. What's happening? Fallen Angel. The ex-harem of the fallen hero, managed to escape and are coming here right now. Azazel. They what? Perfect what's missing now what the hell are we doing? Fallen Angel. And according to Shiva Sama's wives he is also coming here. Michael. This is very bad. Tanan. Oh and this gets even better, I feel the presence of infinite dragon god and the apocalypse dragon coming here at this moment. He said seriously. Auden. Damn we must get everyone out of here right now or else this will be a bloodbath. 
but when they were about to do something they started to hear screams from the crowd, so they went to see the reason seeing the brunette in his fighting suit going inside like that. Seconds before, everyone was impatient for the brunette's arrival until suddenly they see that a purple whirlwind begins to form at the entrance. Everyone recognized that ability, so they became anxious, when suddenly Issei appeared with his mask on, looking at the place. Issei. Can't you stop messing with me, this was a meeting, not a party to celebrate that I had agreed to return. He said annoyed as he began to walk towards the entrance. People shouted Sekiryuite acclaiming their old hero, but this did not matter to the brunette who continued to advance inside, while heading towards the main hall he was analyzing the entire place in search of any trap, but he saw nothing. Issei. Maybe they are so confident that I will come back that they didn't prepare anything, they can't be more idiotic, they think they can laugh at me, it would be better if they don't want me to kill them in front of everyone. He thought annoyed. But what no one knew was that at the Grimory family headquarters, a meeting was taking place with the first patriarchs of the clan, about the current status of their family. We are in crisis, our clan is in a very delicate situation. Due to the current leaders we are in a very complicated situation, and all because they could not keep their relationships under control. This is the fault of your son and grandson's sister, they let themselves be deceived by Lucifer, and now our clan is in danger of losing its status. Don't worry, sister, I won't let my descendants continue to ruin the Gremory name due to their incompetence, so I'll take care of this. And how do you plan to solve this Rhenius? I will go and take back command of our clan and try to save it from misfortune. And how do you plan to do that, I don't think your son will give you control, plus you have to be in a relationship so you can take control. Rhenius. Don't worry about that, I know the right person to help me with this, and I know him very well. You are talking about the one who would take the reins of the clan at the time, I don't think he wants to know about our family, after his mate cheated on him like the others. What's more, I even dare to say that it is very likely that he hates us for that to the point of eliminating you, if he knows your relationship with Rias. Rias. I don't think so, I know how he is, and I know that he doesn't hate the clan itself, but rather the people who betrayed him, although at the moment he may not accept my apologies for what our family did, I'm sure he will accept them if I show him that I say the truth. True, we also know that he is not a bad young man, but I can even say that he will be a very honorable person in the future. There is a sister, you just want to be his mate since you saw him at your granddaughter's wedding, you use this as a pretext to get closer to him. Ernie is. I don't know what you're talking about, Rosalina, she said, looking away. Rosalina. Despite being an adult woman, you are still childish, sister. Ernie is. And you are still bitter. Rosarina. Like you told me. She said starting to run to Rinias who laughed at her. There is for Satan because my family is like that, by a miracle it is still standing. Everyone is happy to see the brunette, they were happy to have him again protecting their lives from their enemy, suddenly everyone sees how the council makes an appearance, drawing attention. Welcome people to this party in commemoration of the return of our pillar to his functions, I am glad that we can finally be safe with him in our ranks. And as had been said he will not only return to his functions, but he will have the obligation to settle down with some heirs in order to train the future generation of demons so that they continue his legacy of defender of the faction against our enemies. Also it will not only be with us, but we also reach a mutual agreement with some mythologies to lend it in marriage with some influential people from their respective factions too, and thus achieve a bond with them for mutual benefit. This day celebrates that our greatest asset is back in action, giving us the certainty that we will last in the current war with our recent enemy. Let's leave the previous events aside and take pass to this new beginning where you will be guided by him, so we ask our pillar to come up and give some words to everyone for his return. Everyone applauded for Issei waiting for him to come up, but nothing happened which left everyone confused until suddenly Issei was seen calmly heading towards where the council members were, when he arrived, everyone thought he would grab the microphone and say a few words, but something happened that no one waited. The first elder devil was thrown towards the well by a blow from Issei, everyone was surprised by what Issei did, he had hit one of the old men on the council. What do you think you're doing, we are Yersha. He could not continue because Issei had hit him in his face, sending him to the ceiling. Everyone was shocked by what Issei did. Issei. Very well, I want everyone to hear me clearly because I will only say it once. He said seriously towards the front while everyone saw him. Are you fuckers idiots? Did you think about that I would come back after what they did to me? He shouted. In anger scaring everyone. They did perhaps believe that after everything I would come back to protect their ass, because they think it won't be like that I don't think to come back and save them after what they did to me so it would be better they put their false hopes where they don't they can rub out. You can't say what you will do, you belong to US no matter what we did to you before, so you better start listening to US. He said trying to sound serious, hoping that I would obey. Hearing this, Issei grabbed him by the neck under the gaze of everyone there. Issei. 
OHH and do you think that you can make me listen to you? I no longer belong to anyone. You yourself freed me and now you think that I will be again under your orders as before because you believe I will no longer be your puppet. Devil Elder. You just have to obey US. You belong to US no matter what you want. If you dare to continue disobeying US we will go after you and your couples. You think we care about them if we want we will use them as a means of deteration to other nobles to support US. So if you don't want that to happen to them, it would be better that you get me down and accept our orders ha 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 ha. Issei's gaze was dark, everyone thought he would accept, while well, their mates were scared by what the old man said. Issei. You dare to threaten my women in front of my damn decrepit old man, you think I'm afraid of you, if I wanted I could end up all of you myself without even needing help. His eyes changed when he started to speak. When they saw his gaze, everyone began to tremble because his eyes suddenly changed to those of a beast. Issei. Do you think that I will allow you to threaten my couples and remain unpunned for that? He said in total fury while he exerted more strength in his grip, choking the counselor. Everyone was scared when they saw and heard how the counselor was screaming, while the brunette began to detach his head from his body under the gaze of everything supernatural. They say. This is what those who think they can threaten my women in front of me receive and think they will leave unhurted. Issei screamed getting more strength finishing ripping off the council's head with the spine under the horror look of the people. Issei threw the body of the council towards the others under his gaze of terror, while still holding his head by the stem, everyone was horrified and shocked by what the brunette did. Issei. I hope this has been clear enough about what will happen if they continue to bother me or even want to threaten my mates. Understand. Everyone was silent. Well, I hope you understand, I don't want to have to cause a massacre because they can't keep up. Away from me. Issei began to go towards the exit while everyone gave way to him while still holding the old man's head, then he crossed next to the leaders. Issei. I hope you know how to control your people, or else this will be nothing compared to what I will do with you. He said giving them the head of the counselor who had a face of pain and terror captured. Issei was just about to leave until he suddenly received an attack that he was able to block. Everyone was scared thinking that whoever attacked him had caused him to get angry. Everyone looked at him so that he was the one who launched the attack, seeing Serzich's next to his father while they pointed at Issei. Issei. This is starting to be annoying. He turned his gaze towards them while he was smiling to see who they were. Oh look who they are, the cuckolds on turn, what's happening don't they like my little show with them advice. Serzich's. You better give up and surrender so we can execute you for treason, you understand. Issei. Ha 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 do you think you have even the most idea about what you're saying, I'm not accountable for this. They looked for it by threatening me and now you're looking for the same thing so it's better that you leave me alone or you'll know the things. Consequences of cuckold Siskin. Zioticus. Do you think you can face us, we are the strongest demons, and you are a simple scum who thinks he can take our families away from us. Issei. What the fuck are you talking about you unhappy I didn't take anything from you, you yourself were the one who took everything from me. Serzich's. You took our wives away from us, it was not enough for you to have my sister, but you went after my Grafia and for my mother. Issei. Bullshit period head. Are you talking about I never saw them that way and even if I did, I never did anything with them. Zioticus. Liar, you deceived them, you made them fall in love with you and consequently they focused on that damn whore who replaced you. Issei. That is no longer my problem but yours, they were the one who decided to surrender to him because surely at least he made them feel more of a woman than you, but that cost them dearly when knowing his identity haha. Ha. Serzicha Zioticus. Bastard. Everyone was attention to what would happen when suddenly before anyone did someone someone appeared next to the Gremories, it was Shiva who was seen to be furious. Shiva. Damn it I will make you pay for the humiliation of that day, now that I know you are gone I will make sure to make you pay. Issei. Then come and I will show you what you accord a useless can do, I will teach you what I can do now, he said, releasing his power just like them. Everything was tense, a fight was about to happen and it would not be any battle, but one between some of the strongest people in the world, but this won't be all while this was happening near there were Issei's ex harem approaching the place in search of him, what will happen now, how this fight will end, and how Issei will take care of his former lovers. Everyone was very tense, the atmosphere was one of death and hatred, no one said anything about what they were about to witness, everyone was afraid that this would get out of control, Issei was very upset that they were bothering him, while the Grimmeries were furious with him. For everything that happened to them just like Shiva who did it for the humiliation he suffered at his hand. None of them were doing anything more than being in a battle pose to throw themselves under the gaze of the supernatural, when suddenly someone accidentally made a cup, causing them to release their strength in an impressive display of power on both sides. Suddenly Issei and the other's three leaders threw themselves at each other, causing almost all of them to fly from the force of their fists colliding. 
Issei without further ado launches a low blow with his knee to Shiva's abdomen, sending him towards the building, being able to dodge the attack of both Gremories. Issei. Haha <laughs> had just look at the respected Gremories attacking from behind, but what could they do if that is their way of getting rid of people, as if they were cowards? Serzichas. Shut up you damn you don't know anything. Issei. What's wrong Siskin did the truth hurt you, I'm sure that whoever against you you eliminated this way since they didn't have the balls to do it head of, like you don't have the balls for your wife oh sorry for the whore delivered to the woman you consider is your mother's bitch. He said while well, dodge an attack from Zeoticus. And look who we have here if it's no one more nor less than the asshole who believes his family is the most powerful in the world when he can't even keep his whore wife satisfied so that she won't have her legs open to another man. Zeoticus. Shut your mouth damn you don't know anything about our family. He said launching attacks at Issei who dodged them or blocked them as if it was nothing. Issei. What happened, seeing how they did it to your wife made you lose your aim, decrepit old man, and I don't need to know your family if just looking at you you can see what they are, simple bastards in all rules, and that to say women are bitches in Hetri who give them even to their worst enemy for pleasure hahaha. <laughs> Serzicha Zeoticus. Silence you can't tell us anything regarding that they said launching their combined attacks. Issei just put his hand in front of him as if he wanted to catch the attack, but as if nothing had happened, the attack stopped in front of him under everyone's surprised gaze. Issei. It's Ad, Grimmeries, you are nothing before me now, you are just simple demons who believe that we all have to obey them as if they were gods when they can't even be called men. He said as he returned the attack, hitting them squarely. Both were lying on the floor, injured by their own attack, but under the watchful eyes of everyone Issei approached so that they were in front. Issei. You can't even do anything to me, I helped you when you needed me, and you repaid me by betraying me and trying to attack me, but you didn't count on the fact that now I would be different from before, I'm no longer that immature child that you could control at will now, I am a different person who will not hesitate to kill them if necessary, he said. Seeing them as if they were nothing more than scum. Issei was about to leave when he received a blow which sent him to the council headquarters, everyone saw that it was Shiva who had entered his tent of a karma mode under everyone's gaze. Shiva. It may be that you have defeated them, but I have not yet given up, human scum, remember that I still owe you the humiliation that you did to me previously. Every Indian woman was seeing how her leader had landed a blow on Issei, which the majority celebrated for this, but their wives were worried about him, they knew that Issei was holding back, since he had not yet used his abilities, not to mention his bestial transformation, they prayed. That nothing would happen to her husband. Shiva. What's wrong? Did you already knock down from that blow don't tell me that your strength was simple theater to scare you s. He said, but when he didn't receive in response he started to get pissed thinking that he underestimated him. What's going on can you no longer be able. If you don't get out of there and face me I'll go for your partner what was her name AAA. Shiva's wives were scared because of what their husband did towards them. They did not know that part of him, but the others were happy that their leader showed the others that he was the strongest, but suddenly everyone became silent when they began to feel a monstrous energy coming out of the rubble of the headquarters, if everyone was already afraid of the energy that Shiva was giving off. That energy completely frightened them, everyone could feel it, even their mates felt it, which worried them. Karama. Something happened, he's starting to lose his patience. Sikvera. We must go after him right away. Karama. I won't just go with Ren and John, if you go it's possible that everything will get worse if they show up. Aisha. But. Karama. Trust me girls, I won't let my friend and brother lose his humanity for them. They all didn't know what to do. Sikvera. Okay I trust you, but please hurry up and bring him back with us. The three of them. Count on it, we will bring him back with us. They said as they left, leaving everyone a little worried about Issei. Underworld. Everything was chaos, Shiva had provoked the brunette by threatening Sekvera, those who saw how he killed the counselor, knew that now he was upset, when he displayed that increase in energy, everyone felt an abysmal pressure on them, they knew that right now the brunette couldn't care less. Nothing mattered except taking care of the bastard who dared to threaten his mate. Everyone moved away from the headquarters when it began to crumble due to the release of Issei's power. Suddenly, a scream of anger began to be heard from there. Shiva did not care about this, he just wanted to make him pay, so he headed there like that, but he didn't expect him to. A rock came flying out of what was left of the building. This didn't seem like a big deal to him, so he destroyed it without further ado. Shiva. Hahaha <laughs> that's all you can do. But he didn't expect that after the rock a kind of tail would appear that sent him flying, followed by a kind of roar. From the ruins of the building Issei came out, but he had changed his armor and had obtained an evolution. Everyone was shocked when suddenly everyone saw that some demonic guard surrounded him while pointing their weapons at him. Guard. By orders of the demon council you are ordered to surrender and surrender yourself for your trial. He said seriously while pointing at him. 
Everyone saw that Issei did not do or say anything when suddenly they heard a phrase that scared them. Issei. Finished them all. Out of his shadow came out his creatures which went towards the guards killing some while others fighted. Issei, seeing that his creatures were containing the nuisances, began to head towards where Shiva was, who had already stood up, but he could not say anything when Issei had suddenly appeared in front of him, giving him a blow to his jaw, which raised him up, but his tail held Shiva's leg, so that he wouldn't fly out of there. But then he began to hit him on the ground with it, while Shiva tried to free himself, but before launching a blow, Issei began to hit him on the floor. Everyone watched as Shiva was slaughtered without warning. The slightest possibility of him defending himself. The entire Indian faction was worried about how Issei was, in simple words, sweeping the underworld with his leader and god, his wives knew that he had asked for it by threatening his mate, but that did not take away the fact of seeing her husband being savagely beaten. In front of your eyes. Issei. What's wrong, here I am, wouldn't you show me my place? He said while continuing to punch Shiva. Answer me asshole, now you have me in front. He said punching Shiva in the face, making him spit up blood. Or are you more comfortable threatening my wives than me? At that he lifted him up and knocked him on the wall while holding him by the neck. I had warned you before, never threaten my partner or else next time I was going to kill you, but as always you think you are the cup of everything and you're not they care about my warning. But thanks to that now the demons know the consequences of that because of what happened to the old man on the council, but I see that some people did not understand with that so why, I don't show them another example of what will happen if they mess with me. Everyone was terrified when they saw what Issei was doing, he was ripping Shiva's arms off like it was nothing, while he was barely conscious while screaming about it. While that was happening you could see the two Grimmeries getting up, they still would not give up their revenge, so thanks to one of the guards who gave them some phoenix tears they were completely healed. But what they both did not know is that their grandmother Runia's Grimmery, the first Grimmery was on her way to the place to stop them in addition to something else, but since she knew what was happening, well, this whole mess was being transmitted to the whole world, so when they saw what they were both doing quickly left for the place. Even Barakiel was full of the place when he knew that his daughter escaped with the others, and they were going towards now, he knew that as soon as the brunette saw her, it was very likely that if she approached him, he would attack her without a hint of doubt, so he called to his niece Uzaku Himajima to help him, because she had the same strength or even greater than his daughter. On the other hand, Shiva's wives, seeing how they were massacring him, quickly went to the place where he was to save him, as well as his son Ganesha. Issei, after dismembering Shiva with one of his arms, began to hit him under everyone's gaze. He did not care that they considered him an enemy. He just wanted to make it clear to them that they did not mess with their mates, and if necessary he would make the entire city an example for this. When he was about to eliminate Shiva once and for all, he felt that some people were approaching that he did not know how to recognize and others that he did. In front of him had appeared Serzich's and his father, Shiva's three wives and his son, as well as his friends. They say. I hope you know that I won't kill you for your family, but don't make me regret that decision. Shiva is my last warning. He said while throwing Shiva towards his family. Everything was silent when they saw who came, but before anything could happen everyone was surrounded by the army of demons, led by the four remaining counselors. Devil Elder. Issei Haidu we order you to surrender yourself for reconditioning under the crime of murder of the three devil elders of the council, and the attack on the council headquarters. Everyone saw how Issei started to shake with laughter while suddenly he let out an infernal laugh, scaring everyone. Issei. Ha <laughs> ha you know one thing, I'm already tired of this. He said while he turned his look to his shadow army. Issei said one word. All the shadow army gives them a sinister smile and lowly said. Kill them all without exception. Everyone saw how Issei's beasts came out of the shadows of the army, dismerting the army of the council under the attentive eye of everyone while those of the council, seeing this. Tried to retreat, but they could not when they see how some chains came out of their shadows that prevented them from moving suddenly Issei appeared in front of them to refuse them, but the council who was in front tried to be brave and started to threaten him, but he did not get more than two words naturally, that Issei destroyed his head with his claws, the others wanted to see that. They screamed but more chains came from the floor which were wrapped around their necks, preventing that. Issei. I'm tired of listening to you, you looked for this, I gave you the opportunity to leave, but you didn't take advantage of it, now you will pay dearly for that. And under the attentive eye of everyone he proceeded to kill the four remaining council council who were left, but then he received an attack from the back which left up smoke. Serzichas. Never underestimate me scum or my family again. Both Grimmeries started launching their attacks Asia the dust cloud, trying to kill Issei while Shiva's family went toward him to heal him, Karama, and the others did not know what to do if they got into the crossfire they could receive damage, but if not they did it they could not stop Issei. 
Suddenly they were the attack from both Reteeds, signing that they had already done with this, but they didn't expect an attack to come out of the dust that sent them to fly, dispersing the smoke, looking at Issei House as if it was nothing. Everyone was surprised the most powerful attacks of both had not done anything even a scratch. Both Grimmeries, seeing that they didn't do anything to him, began to get angry, but they couldn't do anything because Issei appeared behind them where he hit Surzich's completely on the ground, destroying his ribsage from the blow, while he had broken his ribsage with one foot. The column of Ziodicus who was screaming in agony, without further kicking both of them, sending them to the feet of the crowd in front of Azazel and Michael. Issei. It would be better if you take them before I kill you. It's my last warning. So, after today, there won't be another chance. He said, turning towards Karama and the others, undoing his transformation. In that, before reaching them, he stops two fists, Shiva and Ganesha, being the ones who had attacked him, despite the insistence of their wives' mothers, without further ado, already tired, he decides to end this. Without hesitation he deflects both hands and with his leg he beheads Shiva under the gaze of everyone, and holds his son by the neck. The wives were about to cry for seeing their husband die in front of them, but they focused on their son, who was about to suffer what he said. Same at the hands of Issei. Issei. As always, young people follow the legacy of their ancestors. He said as he raised Ganesha ready to end a future threat, but before he did so he saw how three women knelt in front of him begging. Ali. Please forgive our son, I beg you. Durga. We implore you, please do not take away our only reason for living. Harvati. We swear that we will not do anything against you for what you did to our husband, but please forgive his son, our baby for his offense. All of them were crying uncontrollably, waiting for the brunette to spare his son's life, all of this under the brunette's neutral gaze. Issei. You can assure me that you will not do anything against me and my family if I allow you to live, not even your faction. He said seriously. They nodded, hoping that would convince the brunette of his word. Issei. You better fulfill it or else you will see your son as a murderer in front of you and your people. His father did not know what it is to be someone noble. I hope you teach him how to be one, or else he will end up just like him under my hand. He said, throwing Ganesha in front of them, whom they hugged while they thanked the brunette for giving him the opportunity to be better than his husband father. Issei without further ado went to his friends who were waiting for him to leave with the girls, but before they could leave they saw how the transportation circle stopped, Issei knew that only one person could do that. Issei. Gasper he said in anger. Behind them were all his ex-harem along with Kiba, Saji, Gasper, Razor and Arthur. We finally found you darling. They said in while they had a face of ecstasy. Karama, Ren and John knew that Issei could barely control himself because of what just happened, but with them present, they knew it wouldn't end well. Issei, on the other hand, could only attribute a single word of anger to him, a very great anger that invaded him from the depths of his being. Rias. There is my beautiful and tender farmhand, you don't know how much we miss you with us. Akeno. You don't know how much you missed us, you need a punishment for making us wait so long my pretty Kmai. She said licking her lips. Sona. Hi Dukun, you don't know how much you missed us all this time, we didn't know what to do without you. He said while his entourage nodded. Irina. I couldn't be without my childhood friend and love, I felt empty inside. Hineko. Issei Senpai, I need your head pats, I have felt very alone without you. Valerie. My rival and husband so I can be complete again. Gabriel. Issei Kun, you don't know what I suffered by not being able to be with you, look, even my wings felt your absence. She said, spreading both wings showing her state, surprising the supernatural by seeing it. Enemu? Come on Issei I need my stallion with me so I can feel full. Isaka. There is love, you don't know how bad we feel for not having you by our side, even our daughter feels the same as us. Who knew? True Odo-san, since you left I felt that I needed you. She said while giving a lustful look. Diamat. My only mate, we need to make up for the lost time we have, she said provocatively. Scarlet, office. My only dragon god we must strengthen our bonds and raise the next generation of dragon rulers. Lilith. On each chan we need to increase our race. Then Alana. Come on Issei Kun, mommy needs a little help from you. Raphia. Milikas needs a little brother. Issei was really bothered by the words that came out of these whores mouths, he was about to kill them right there. But without them realizing it, behind Issei and his friends, a seal began to form that if they had seen it, they would recognize it immediately, while well, next to Kurama a magical circle appeared, revealing itself too. What will happen now, will Issei just leave or will he fight against them, who are the group that appeared behind him, when will Runias, the first Grimmery in the history, be present, who will bring that known seal or who in this case, well, let's find out. Issei could not feel more furious with what was happening, first they had betrayed him by taking away everything he fought for and strived to achieve, then his same women who had sworn to love him for eternity, were the ones who had apparently given the idea. 
to change him for someone better even his parents agreed on this, he couldn't think of anything more than the simple fact of wanting revenge right now, to show these bastards that now he was not their toy which they could throw away when they would like and then need it back. All behind Karama were the current women of the brunette who did not last long and decided to come look for their mate, but they were surprised to find themselves face to face with the girls who hurt the brunette and they did not like to see how their mate was. Issei in front of them. Issei. Why? He said inaudibly for everyone. Because, 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 why the fuck don't you leave me alone, you damn sluts people. I scream, scaring everyone with the hatred that you express in your words. I had gave them all of me and in exchange I usually asked them to love me like I did. He took a step forward cracking the floor. But what I received in exchange. Nothing only I received their hate and contempt. He said as he began to cry, the ex harem upon seeing him began to feel bad for how they had hurt him, while Sekfara and the others cried for seeing their man break like that in front of them. And now that I was able to move on, they come to try to make me come back with you, don't they know everything I suffered, what I left it for you, how many times they hit me for defending them, how many times I had to die so that you would be well, you don't know what I gave of myself for you so you would discard me and then come looking for me as if everything had been a simple misunderstanding. His eyes began to change between them, activating the different phases he has. You don't know how much despite I have for all of you, you are just simple pieces of meat that walk there from mouth to mouth, you do not have decency or a pitch of being women. Nobles, they are just simple bitches who seek to put whatever inside them. Those words hurt the girls because of how he said it. Rias. Is say it is true that we did not know how to value everything you did for us, but we regret everything we did to you, we just want to go back to being like before, to be a family again, I know you are very hurt by what we did to you, and I know that. Is say. My pain, that does not compare with what I felt that day, that day I knew Rainer was right in what he told me the last time you only want power, and I was the means to get it. Asia. But Issei san, that was not our intention, we loved you the way you were, please come back to us, and we will show you that that's not why we used you. Issei. Shut up you damn witch, you were one of those who I gave everything of me to make happy, I saved you and welcomed you as my sister and then started to feel something for you, but in the end you only played with me, the people of that town were right about something when throwing you away, you are just a witch that brings pain to everyone who come close to you. Asia, upon hearing those words, collapsed on the ground, starting to cry because of what the brunette said. Zenovia. Listen, how can you tell him that, don't you see that we are sorry for what we did? Irina. Issei, please stop it, apologize to her, don't you see that she is very hurt by what we did to you, maybe you don't know how to forgive, please remember our promises to have a life together as a family. Issei. Whoa look who's talking, the two fuckers who are just like her, want me to forgive them when the only one here who suffered was me, haha <laughs> don't make me laugh you don't deserve anything from me, in, but all those promises can be taken by you and throw them away since to me they mean nothing before some whores like you. But what can we say about one who is an idiot who only served as canon food for the church while the other is nothing more than a girl who doesn't know what it's like the real world goes on saying that everything is the work of God, but you know let me tell you something God if he was alive and saw them he would surely be drowning in tears when seeing the abomination that I think is you and all. Of heaven, I pity that he is resting in peace since he would not see what his children became. Both girls fell like Asia because of Issei's words. Issei. And let's not forget about the rest of the major bitches entrance, but what can we say about the half angel and demon, it is already in their nature to use people for their plans and then discard them like an old rag, tell me Akeno how do you think how your mother would feel when seeing the awful thing you became. Akeno. Issei, stop it, please. She said crying. Issei. It disgusts me the simple fact of thinking that I ever loved you, it repudies me to have anyone next to me, who acts like this in front of everyone, and now let's go with the bitchy street pussy haha ha, I had to know it. When I met Kuroka I could tell by her behavior she was a simple hungry islet just like her little sis who was afraid to show her true face, but what could you expect from two sisters, they are both the same stray cats that go and wallow with anyone you show them you fucking sluts, leaving you crazy about her, I hope you die alone without being able to revive your sultry race race. Both sisters were devastated by the brunette's harsh words. Valerie. Issei, please listen to us, not everything was like that. Issei. Look who we have here, saying that everything is not like I experienced it, you know something morning star you became a scam identical to your grandfather, hell you fucked your own grandfather, ahahaha, look at you, even worse than him, you're lucky that your mother is not among us. Which is what I would say if I knew that her daughter fucked with her grandfather surely that would have killed her if she's still alive, but lucky and she's not here now to see the abomination that is her daughter. Valerie began to cry and scream when remembering all the things he did. What would she say now about your big sis, Lavinia, she is surely ashamed of you for having called you sister. Rosweeser. Issei, stop, don't you see that you're hurting us? She said, sobbing because she saw how the brunette hated them. 
is say. Me, hurting them, haha <laughs> no why fucker wife wanna be, I'm just spiting facts, the truth to you, who really hurt me, tell me one thing do you think that now that everyone knows who you were with someone would look at you if they wanted, you think they would be with of the bitches of a Valkyrie. Who asked the worst man in history even Lucifer the first fallen angel well be ashamed of his son action, you fucked him thinking he was your hero haha, <laughs> to make you pregnant while he continued deceiving you, do you think someone wanted such a semen toilet like you? Valkyrie couldn't stand those words and ended up breaking down right there. And what to say about the others, they are very quiet, no, they don't want to talk so I don't tell them what I think about you, well what a shame, you despite not being the first to notice me, I love you just like them, but that what does it care, you were not enough with that. You wanted more and more, but in the end you got nothing hehehe <laughs> well I think if you got anything it was being marked by Rizavim, the worst terrorist, in the history of the supernatural history hahaha. <laughs> I must say when I remember your broken face expression, reveling his true colors who he was, it's was something made me feel really really good, it was the fact of knowing that you would suffer because of that, I hope I'm still alive like this at least, I thank you all bitches for exiling that day, free me from such leg spreading bitches like you, and by the way you were always annoying crying. Ah you know I wish I had never met you. That ended up destroying what was left in them. I wish I had continued my normal life as a simple human, but I must thank you at least, thanks to you I was able to change and meet those who are now my reason for living, even Supernatural didn't know how to leave me calm they only used me, but now I am free and they can't do anything to prevent it. Everyone was shocked, Issei was telling the truth without any indication of regret, everyone felt that he was the one who had suffered the most, but they didn't know how to leave him alone, and now he was there in front of everyone telling them his truths, no matter how cruel they may be. Issei. Hahaha <laughs> it makes me want to puke, remembering that I ever wanted to have a family with you, all of you, but what can I do I was a complete an idiot to believe your words, but no longer I'm tired of this, I'm tired of you and the supernatural fuckers, that's it time for us to end this. Suddenly everyone saw how purple and red spheres came out of his shadow, beginning to accumulate above him in a mass of pure power, Karama recognized it immediately so he was about to stop him, but before he finished Issei was hugged by Sekvera and the others who were crying, as they saw how he was suffering. Sekvera. Issei you made me the happiest person when you accepted me as your girl, I knew that you were very hurt by what they did to you because you distrusted me, but you were able to give me a chance to show you that what I felt for you was true. Aisha. Issei I know that you are very angry now and that you want to get rid of all of them, but remember, we are with you now, and we will not leave you for anything or anyone, since you are our greatest happiness. Ruby. Maybe we didn't know what you suffered back then, but that didn't stop us from falling in love with you, you are one of the most gentle and loving people in the world, don't let them change that person. Roygun. Issei I know that we just started dating, but when I saw Sekvara and Leisha happy by your side, I knew that you were a great man, it may sound like I was jealous of their happiness, but I assure you that what I feel for you now is authentic. Brunhold. Issei, both I and my sister feel that if we are with you we will be happy, so don't abandon us. Alicia. Issei, I can tell you that I am very sorry that my people have hurt you that way, but I swear that I will help my friends and sisters heal your hurt heart, and I will show you that my love for you is pure. Jisato. Issei, the day I treated you at the academy I knew that despite showing people that you were fine, you were actually suffering, so I and my sister will heal you together. Ryder. You are the best thing that happened to me, that's why I won't let you stay hurt, but it's not just me who thinks this, but all of us. Pateria. Issei since we met I have wished for the day where I can be in front of you as a man, and you would ask me to be your woman, so I will not allow you to leave us. Aika and Rumi. You are the best thing that could have happened to us, and we will fight if necessary to be with you. Issei began to calm down when he saw his girls, but it didn't all end there, but suddenly three magic circles appeared between the exes and Issei, leaving several people surprised to see who appeared. On the one hand we had Barakiel who was accompanied by a girl almost identical to Akeno, leaving the aforementioned girl surprised, on the other hand we had Lavinia who looked serious, while Valerie was surprised to see her again, and which made most of them wonder. Was seeing a red-haired woman who looked very angry, leaving five people very surprised to see her here. Serzichas, Rias, Grafia, Ziodicus and Venelana. What is she doing here? They said, terror by her presence. Issei was confused, he knew three of the four people who arrived, but he didn't know anything about the Redeed until she spoke. Ernias. I can't believe my family is so stupid, they don't know the shame they put me through, Ziodicus grab your family and get out of here right now while I fix this. Ziodicus. But my lady, I can't leave without making him pay for the shame he put our clan through. Ernias. You better listen to me, the only shame the clan suffered was because of your incompetence, I warned you about your family and look what happened, you let them remain silent in disgrace, staining the name of the clan for just a piece of erect member, until your wife fell silent for him. Serzichas. 
My lady but all of that is because of him, this is his fault. Ernie's. And since it's his fault, so he wasn't the one who cheated on you both or yes, you know what it doesn't matter, just get out of here right now, will you still retain a little bit of your dignity. Zioticus. But. Ernie's. Get out of here right now I told you, you don't know how to listen or what. Zioticus. But you can't give me orders, I am the current leader of the clan, so you can't command me. Ernie's. That's where you're wrong, the current family council decided to revoke your status as patriarch, so now you're just a simple member of the family. Serzich's. Because they decided that without consulting us. We the main family. Ernie's. It is because currently you were the cause of the family's decline due to your actions, you truly believed that everything your women did would go unpunished, not only was that the trigger. The fact that made the council take action into the thing was that you two pair of idiots were going to attack him, because of the absurd idea that it was his fault that you were cheated on when you couldn't even control your wives. Zioticus. But I am the only one who can lead the clan, there is no one qualified to take the reins of it. Ernie's. You are wrong about that, son, by order of the Elder Elder, the mandate of the clan remains in my hand, will you become part of a secondary branch of the clan, due to the misfortune that you brought upon us. Serzich's. But you can't be the head of the clan, as a requirement you need to be in a relationship for that, and you don't have anyone. Ernie's. That was also already solved, so that I could take the reins I was engaged to a person of high status, soon my engagement will be made official, so there is no problem, so retreat right now to the main house of the family, where the other members are waiting to give them new orders. She said seriously, seeing how they both went for the three women, taking them by force because they did not want to leave with the others. While that was happening we can see Barakiel trying to take his daughter and Penemu with Azazel, while Suzaku sneakily watched a brunette who was watching everything that was happening. But suddenly everyone falls silent when they hear a slap that came from Lavinia to Valerie. Valerie. Sister, why did you slap me? Lavinia. Don't you dare call me that, I don't recognize you as the girl I grew up together with, I can't believe everything you did. Seriously I'm very disappointed in you Valerie, maybe I hadn't taught you that you should always respect your mate, I want you to explain to me why that is, maybe he didn't show you the love he felt for you, or it wasn't enough for the great Lucifer. Valerie didn't say anything because of the shame she felt. Lavinia. What's wrong, you can't talk about the shame you feel, maybe your mother and I didn't raise you to be a decent woman, but what should I expect from a brat who loves fighting, I allow you to be arrogant and childish, but this doesn't happen. I forgive you Valerie Lucifer, I do not forgive the act of adultery that you did, you know very well what I think about that, and to make things better, it was no one but your own grandfather with whom you did it, don't you have a little modesty. Listen to me well since I will not say it again, I do not want to see you back, I do not even want to feel your presence, it will be mine, you are left out of the slash dogs group from today onwards, you and the others can consider this as the goodbye, it's better that you pick up your things from Tobio's bar, or else we'll throw them away ourselves, I don't even feel like saying goodbye to you. You don't know how disappointed I am. She said as she prepared to leave under the gaze of Issei who saw that I was holding back the urge to cry. While Valerie is destroyed by the words of the one she once considered her sister. Issei was about to leave the place with his group, he no longer had anything to do there, but before doing so he heard someone approaching, he thought for a moment that it was for some stupid thing like those from the council, but he was surprised when he turned around and saw the redeed from before kneeling in front of him. Ernie's. Apologize to my family for all the pain they put you through, I know that perhaps a simple apology is not enough, but the clan is not aware of this, I ask that you can forgive my clan for the idiotic things they committed. Issei. Ah, I'm not going to forgive them for everything they did to me, but I don't hate their clan, just them, I know that you weren't involved in this. Ernie's. I understand and apologize for what my descendant did to you, I also wanted to know if we could talk later in the presence of others, since we plan to prosecute my son along with his family for everything that happened, and we wanted you to be a witness to this dot. Issei didn't know what to do, he was suspicious of this, but he decided to give it a chance, okay, I'll go, just let me know when and where it will be. Ernie's. Of course there is no problem, well with that said I'm going to leave. She said while giving a smile and disappearing. Issei was surprised by the change in mood he had, but he left it for later, with everything ready, he also left the place without knowing that the kind of gap with the seal was still there seeing everything. Yufufu I see that you didn't waste any time, and you became stronger since our confrontation, I can't wait to be able to see you again and leave this place, but soon I will be able to go with you my beloved. Said a black haired woman dressed wearing a Japanese outfit while he was floating thanks to a pair of black dragon wings. The week had passed since what happened in the underworld, no one spoke about what happened, the Grimmeries went to the family headquarters to await their trial, Issei's ex-lovers locked themselves in their current houses or rooms, what the brunette had told them. Said left them mentally broken. 
people the other factions were a little worried about how would Issei follow them in the future, although they knew that they had discarded him, they now knew that that decision was wrong, Issei's current strength made them reconsider their previous actions, but with what happened, that he made it clear that he would not help them again in the approaching war. But not all factions were worried about that, one case would be the Aztec faction, which was not allied with any other faction, so they had no relationship with the former pillar, which attracted the attention of the main goddess of that pantheon. Who wants to meet the brunette and ask for some help from him, as well as an offer for his help. But let's put that aside and see what our brunette was doing, a week had passed since the encounter he had in the underworld, and this time nothing new happened, we can only say that his current hero job is highly requested by the people, due to the high crime rate or the renegades, that the heirs of the place had to take care of. We can now see the brunette lying on the sofa resting in a pose that gave his wives a lot to think about who saw him from the window frame. The girls ate it with their eyes, they wanted to give it a taste, but that's it. Ika. Sorry, but Sikvera, that's that big and juicy. She said, pointing to the brunette's crotch. When they saw what he was pointing out, they all blushed when they saw how his titan was visible in those tight pants, and even more so since he suddenly started playing with his hands, as if he were squeezing two round things, that made them lose their total sanity. They were approaching to devour their prey, but to their bad luck, Karama appeared from the back window. Karama. What's up y'all, your big daddy Kyuubi has arrived. Karama's scream made Issei wake up from his sleep, the women seeing that looked at a Karama who was in an apologetic pose while sweating for what he did, but that did not save him from the beating that was given to him by them. Later we can see Issei walking through the square going to the center to see some things he would need, but I don't expect that many people seeing him would see him because of his songs where they ask for photos, but in that a girl notices his presence being there is 2B who was nearby with his sister and friends. Minutes before we can see the four walking around while they saw the stores and their things a little, they only talked about their tastes and preferences, until B2 notices a group of people in the distance and in the middle was Issei, when his gaze saw him, it seemed like he was seeing someone he hadn't seen in a long time, without any warning here and out while his sisters were looking at a store. To B. Hello Issei, how are you? She said, happy to see him. Issei. Who, oh hello 2B, how are you, I didn't see you before, sorry, but I'm fine, thank you. To be. I'm glad to hear it, and what you're doing here. Issei. He's coming to walk a little and buy certain things I need and you. To be. I'm watching things with my sister and friends back, hey Issei, don't you want to join us? Issei. Are you sure, I don't want to bother them? To be. I don't think so, it's more likely that they like you to accompany us. Issei. Okay let's go with them. To be. Great, come on, I'll take you to them. They both went to the others, while they were looking for their friend who disappeared from there as if nothing had happened. To A. Where has this girl gone? Saber. Don't worry, your sister is not a person who will easily fall for someone. Maria. He, yeah, calm down, it's not like you came with someone else, you know her. Without warning, she turns around while organizing her hair and clothes, while the others were surprised by that, but before they asked her the reason for that was that they heard B2 speak to them, seeing that she was not coming alone. To B. Girls, look who I ran into. They say. Hello girls, how are you doing? When they saw him, they were both embarrassed to see who it was, and cursing themselves for not being more attentive, while Maria was already dressed up and ready for Issei to see her. Maria. Hello Issei, how are you? She said, extending her hand and greeting. Issei. Well Maria, you look very beautiful in those clothes just like the others. When they heard it, they all blushed, but Maria, being closer to him, couldn't bear to see that smile, which is why she began to unconsciously release pheromones that made the males go into heat. Issei noticed that since her scent was sweet like peach. Issei. Wow, I see that she really loves me haha, <laughs> but who would have thought that a dragon would be interested in me? The others, seeing that their friend began to release pheromones, moved her way from Issei to prevent anything from happening at that moment. What they didn't know was that even if she were a human, she wouldn't fall easily to that. Saber. You're fine Issei, you don't feel anything strange. Issei. I'm not fine because you say so. Saber. For nothing, I was just asking. Everyone after that took a walk through the center, it must be said that they caught people's attention because of how they looked. When it was time to leave, they said goodbye and each person retired to their home. When the brunette arrived home, everyone was at the dollar table waiting for him to show him something. Issei. What's happening? Sikvera. Issei, a letter arrived for you. Issei walked over and opened the letter as he proceeded to read it. Issei. It is an invitation to try a rest area with hot springs in Mexico. Karama. This is very strange. Chisato. What about the letter or the fact that it is from another country? Karama. No, it doesn't explain how we will get there. Suddenly he fell silent due to a blow from Laisha. Laisha. 
idiot, we don't know who sent it, it may be some trap for Issei, and you're just joking. Garama. There is just a joke. Smith. Leaving aside what you're going to do, I know that country is where the Aztec faction resides. Ryder. We don't know why they want Issei to go there. Viteria. But it's not just him, but us too. Yang. What did they want from us? Issei. Surely it must be because of the display of power I had, I knew that sooner or later it would happen. Ruby. And what are you planning to do Issei? Issei. We will go, if they want us to form an alliance we must do it, they were one of the only factions that were not there when I was discarded, I don't know what awaits us in the future, but we need all the help we can if we want to face it, and the biblical factions are not an option, so we'll go see what they offer. Everyone was serious about that. Plus I want to have a break in the hot springs without being bothered. Everyone turned their backs while Blake slapped him in the face. To say. Karama. Come on, I'm not the only one. They say. You have to wait, I'm tired of them bothering me to go back to them, and I also want to see my mates in swimsuits. He said flirtatiously, earning a blush from his women who called him an idiot. Haha, <laughs> I knew they would like the idea. But Nora and Pura thought that it was an excellent opportunity to propose to the boys, and at the same time have a little night action with them, but Issei's girls also thought the same thing which made all of them have a common thought. I feel like something very exciting is going to happen. The next morning we can see Issei and the others preparing their things to go to the venue where they were invited. But if we go to another part of the city we can see four friends who were also preparing their things for a trip. Okay girls, ready to go on an adventure. Urza, you are the only one I know who wants to go climb a mountain on another continent. Leave her a came, you know what she is like. The came? I know Laphoria, I know it very well. Stella. I hope we can rest from everything that happened at the academy, but I will miss the place in some way. Urza. Now Stella, it's not forever, it's only two weeks and you'll be able to see your brunette. Stella. What are you saying Urza? Urza. Haha <laughs> I knew that was the reason for your sadness. The came. You better not laugh too much Urza since you have a photo of him on your cell phone. Urza. Akeem, I will make sure that you accompany me in all my training from now on. He said running to an Akeem who was neutral. Aphoria. Oh my god, they will never mature, but I don't deny that we will miss the academy and him too this period. Leaving that aside we can see how in Mexico Quetzalcoatl was on top of his pyramid looking at the sky while smiling. Quetzalcoatl. Who would say, I, the great goddess of Mesopotamia, interested in someone, it has been a long time since someone caught my attention, but we will see what he is like, first of all, I will not let someone weaker than me possess me, so I wait and be prepared to say, since I won't make it easy for you. While she was there below the pyramid, Sunaid was drinking under the shade of a tree, while she reviewed Issei's life from his birth until now. Sunaid. MMM, the young man is very interesting, he did not fall in any situation that he was faced with, and he continued as if nothing had happened, he is a person of very strong conviction, and despite being young, he is mature enough to be considered a born warrior, he will be interesting to know him. Hours later we can see RSA and his friends getting off the plane, while they ordered a taxi to go to the complex. Minutes after arriving at the place they went to the counter where a tall, blue-haired woman with a serious but calm look served them. Esdith. Good afternoon, I am Esdith, the receptionist of the place, can I give you your invitation or reservation? They say. Yes Miss Esdith, here is our invitation from the owner of the place. Esdith. Well, I've already confirmed it, just go through the reception room, and the owner will come right away to receive you. They say. Thank you Miss Esdith. He said smiling making his women pinch him. But Esdith blushed barely visible, but without leaving her stoic face. After that, everyone headed to the place Esdith said, seeing a room all furnished like a hall. Sunaid. Welcome to this rest area, I introduce myself, I am the owner of this place, my name is Tsunade, and I will be the one to show you the place a little. She said on the top floor while leaning on the railing. They say. Yes, thank you, but can I ask a question first? Sunaid. Tell me, young man, what do you want to know? They say. It wouldn't have been simpler if the Aztec faction had sent us a normal letter without hiding it, as if it were an invitation to a tourist resort. He said, giving him a calm smile. Sunaid was surprised by how receptive the brunette was. You are very smart to say, but tell me how I will tell you about that. They say. Next time, don't put a receptionist who has a high power at the counter, and don't be too obvious with a letter, since your true intention can be deduced, Miss Sunaid. Sunaid. You are much more interesting than you usually appear, but tell me why you agreed to come even knowing that. They say. Easy, I need allies for what is coming, and from what I see you also think that, I trust that you are different than the other mythologies, that is why I will give you an opportunity to form an alliance against the Legion. Sunaid. 
I see, then I guess I'll skip the performance, but you'll have to wait for my lady and leader to come to talk about it, so enjoy the place until then. Everyone was happy to hear that. Sunate. But I would like to talk to you a little essay, there is something I would like to ask you. Everyone was silent, the girls didn't like that a bit, but the brunette agreed to go, and for the time being, they were going to have fun until he went with them. Essay. Well now that we are alone, what do you want to ask me? Sunade. Don't worry, it's nothing very important, I just wanted to get to know you better, since what happened to you you have become very powerful, but I don't see that it's for revenge, tell me why did you do it if it's not to get revenge on them? Issei stared at her making her shiver from that look, but at that he sighed, loosening his gaze. Issei. That's easy, I did it for Sekvera, when they banished me she came to me wanting to heal my hurt heart, I knew that it was possible that something would happen, so I decided to become stronger to protect her from anyone who wants to hurt her, then Laisha came, who showed me the same as her, an unconditional and pure love. I knew that more would come after them, so I totally decided to be someone who could protect them no matter what. Everyone says that I became strong for revenge, maybe at some point I thought about it, but the truth is that I did it for them, for my friends who are with me, so that is the answer, I do it for them, not for revenge. Sunade was surprised by the reason for his strength, he was not someone who sought revenge, but someone who wanted to protect those he knew, that made her see him in a different way, it was no longer a young man who was in front of her eyes, but a man. Noble man who would give everything for the people closest to him. But she wasn't the only one, there was also Esdith behind a window who listened to everything, being surprised at the brunette's way of being, and Issei's friends and their mates were behind the door listening too, they were all happy to hear that from him. Issei. And what can you tell me about yourself, miss, I already told you what I wanted, now it's your turn. Sunaid. He, you're smart, well tell me what you want to know about me. Issei. Tell me a little about yourself and the Aztec faction, just the essentials like your way of acting. Sunaid. Well, how do I start? While that was happening we can see at the base of the legion the four generals chained in front of Victor, who was smiling to see that. Victor. Who would have thought that they would fall in love with a target, but that would be useful to us. Saber. That you plan to make us miserable. Victor. I'm nothing but you are, you will capture the brunette and bring him to me so I can decipher how he has those powers. Do A. And you think we'll do it just like that. Victor. I was hoping they would say that. Professor prepare the obedience chip, we need to have the trap baits ready. In the background we can see Professor X with an implant gun preparing four chips for the girls while laughing. Do be. Issei, please help us. Maria. Issei. She screamed when she saw how the professor was coming towards them with the gun. Well that was happening. We can see the brunette's exes without the grimmeries planning what to do to have the brunette, but if we see well we can see that they were not very well so to speak, upon hearing what he told them they all totally lost their mental stability, so if the he didn't accept them calmly, they would show him what would happen if he wasn't theirs. They were willing to do anything to get him back even if they had to put him back in a coma to be able to make him theirs. All the grimmeries, Rias, Grafia and Venelana, were in the main family house thinking about what they would do to make Issei come back to them. Everything starts to move and the pieces are in place, but what they didn't know is that a new enemy is getting closer and closer, and it was not something that the people of this world could face. What will happen now from now on? That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.